What's up guys, Leopold the Brave here, and I just got done with Season 1, Episode 1 of The Walking Dead. Days gone by, and... Woo, what a way to start a show. Now, to be honest, it didn't really give off a good first impression in, like, the first two minutes. That scene where, um, Rick is getting out of his sheriff's car, looking for gas, and then there's, like, this one zombie girl. It was... It was very hokey. Very, very hokey. L little girl? Little girl. I'm a police officer. L little girl? <laughs> I, I, I kind of laughed through that scene. Um, so I started thinking to myself, all right, it's going to be that kind of show. But after the opening title screen, title sequence, theme song, whatever you want to call it, after that went by, it really picked up fast. We got to know this guy Shane a little bit, I think his name was. I'm not super good with names. Uh, we got to hear about Rick's wife and kid, Lori and Carl... Um, but anyways, he gets shot and put into, like, this coma or something, and he wakes up into a, uh, wakes up in a hospital. And the hospital scene was actually super well done. It was a complete change of pace from that hokey opening scene. I actually had chills during the hospital scene, and I made the mistake of eating while watching the show. <laughs> because when he peeks through the windows of those double doors, and there's, like, this mangled up zombie corpse or something just laying across the hospital floor it was it was disturbing <laughs> but anyways after rick escapes the hospital he meets this uh small black family uh son and his dad the son's name was Dwayne. i don't remember the dad's name i don't think i caught it uh maybe next episode if they show up again they're kind of little mini arc or something that they seem to have going on it it cut off on a cliffhanger we the, d the dad's wife, the black dad, his wife is zombified or something, and he was trying to put her down, but he couldn't bring himself to do it, so hopefully we get to some continuation on that, because I like them a lot. I hope they show up more. But anyways, they help Rick out, Rick helps them out, and then they s go their separate ways, they stay at home while Rick goes off to Atlanta, and gets surrounded by this giant horde of zombies, and now he's hiding in a tank. <laughs> yes, yes, I pride myself in my descriptiveness. Um, but anyways, the first episode cuts off, or ends there, as a helicopter's passing by, and, um, he's hiding in the tank, and he gets a uh, transmission on the radio, or walkie-talkie, whatever, and I don't know what's going on, but yeah, I can't wait to find out. So I'm gonna go check out episode two. But overall, I thought episode one was really good, it was a really good start, and I can't wait to see where the series goes, so, yeah, bye. Alrighty, just got done with Season 1, Episode 2, and that was equally as good. I liked it a lot. Um, but they wasted no time at the beginning with Shane and Rick's wife. That's gonna be awkward when, uh, Rick gets back. Um, but anyways, there was something about Episode 1 that I forgot to mention, uh, when I recorded it. Um, but the soundtrack really stands out to me. Like, usually in a lot of live-action stuff, I don't tend to pay attention to the, um, to the score, the musical score. I don't know, it just doesn't come across my mind. Um, but here, it actually stuck out to me a bit, like that scene in the first episode where uh, Rick climbs up the hill uh, after escaping the hospital and sees the town just totally wrecked, you know, the helicopter and the cars and all that. And then there was another time where he was sitting out in front of his house when uh, Dwayne and his dad come up. Like, just this sad, lonely feeling and then the tension of someone sneaking up behind him. So I think the soundtrack and musical score was really good. Um, but back to episode two, we got to meet this little Asian dude named Glenn. He's really cool. I like him a lot. And Glenn had this little, uh, this little crew with them. There was this blonde lady, a couple other people. Um, there was this, uh, racist guy. I ha I remembered his name, like, through the whole episode, and now all of a sudden I can't remember. But there was this really racist white trash guy that they left handcuffed to the roof. So he got what he deserved, thank goodness. Um, but yeah, the episode was centered around, uh, Glenn and his crew, along with Rick now, uh, attempting to escape a department store, and the blonde lady kinda got in my nerves at first. She's like, look what you did! You killed us all! Oh man! You killed us all! Look what you've done! And it was just, it was really kind of annoying at first, but I grew to like her more and more as the episode went on. You know, when we find out he, uh, she had a sister, and her sister is part of the other camp that, uh, Rick's wife and kid. Uh, Lori and Carl were in. Uh, so it's neat to know that those groups are connected, so we know they're going, they all know each other, so they're probably going to meet up again soon with Rick, and it's going to be interesting and awkward, and um, yeah, I can't wait to see that. But this episode was also really nasty. Um, I mean, you could already tell from the title, it was called Guts, and they like cover themselves in zombie 
blood and guts and ugh, to try and blend in, and it surprisingly worked. That was a really stupid plan. It's like with wild animals or something tracking by scent. That's just really, really odd to me for some reason. Um, but yeah, it was nasty. It was an interesting episode though. So I really like I really like Glenn and his crew. Um, and Rick's still a cool character. I like him so far. Uh, his, he's very resourceful. He's getting in, uh, lots of people out of the situations and... Yeah, I'm just I'm just rambling at this point. The point is, I enjoyed the episode a lot, what was in it, and I'm looking forward to what's coming up. So on to episode three! Episode three, this idiot just cut off his hand! Now, I'm actually recording this the next day because I didn't get a chance to record, like, after watching episode three yesterday. So I may not remember some things too clearly, but oh well. So in this episode, uh, Rick got back to the camp where Shane and everyone was, and yes, it was awkward. As soon as Rick and Lori were hugging, I could just see the look of guilt on her face. And Shane like, oh man. It just, <laughs> oh that was hilarious. Um, I can't remember if she told Rick what happened though. I think she just said that she was sorry for things. Just very vague about it when they were in the tent or something. So, I, I know Rick's going to find out eventually. I just hope everything goes well and reasonable. <laughs> I'm not on Shane or Lori's side in this situation, I just feel bad for Rick, because Lori ain't telling him nothing, and Shane is just... Shane, and gross, and scumbag, and turd, and bleh. Um, but yeah, Shane's also being a chicken about when people need to go out and scavenge or something to different places. Like, Rick and, uh, the dude's brother, Daryl, I think his name was, uh, the racist redneck's brother, um... They're trying to go back to Atlanta to go get him uh, with Glenn, and uh, Shane is just being a big old whiny baby about it. He's like, no, don't go. We need to stick together. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't like Shane or Lori. <laughs> I just feel bad for Rick. Um, but, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happened to that uh, particular redneck racist because... Um, at first I thought he was just gonna die up there get eaten by walkers because the episode opened up with him just sitting on the roof talking to himself and blabbering like an idiot while the walkers were trying to creep in through the door. Um, and by the time we got back to him at the end of the episode, his hand was laying on the floor. <laughs> so, idiot, why did you cut off your hand with the hacksaw and not the handcuffs? Either that or the uh, walker zombies got him and just ate everything except the hand. I I don't know what went on, so it's going to be exciting to see what exactly happened to him. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm going to go on to episode 4 now. I thought this episode was pretty entertaining. It was pretty chilled out and slow. I think I actually like it when they just calm down and talk to each other and chit chat. These characters are fun to watch banter back and forth. Um, you can't say that about a lot of... TV show cast, so I'm looking forward to seeing more of them. On to episode four. Episode four. <laughs> I didn't like that episode. <laughs> Alrighty, I, I took a quick moment in between those two little voice clips, but um, wow. I actually did like the episode. Uh, very much, actually. <laughs> I was just overreacting. Uh, but yeah, the episode starts off with this guy, Jim, digging a bunch of holes. And apparently he had some kind of dream or something a heat stroke that was making him do it and it turns out it was like a premonition of what was going to happen that night uh because there was a zombie attack and one of the sister uh the younger sister died her name was amy i think that's that's what the older sister was crying when holding her dead body it's probably going to turn into a zombie um <laughs> but yeah that happened. Um, in between all that, though, uh, Glenn got kidnapped by, like, this gang. And, um, they're, like, take... They have the... They have their own old folks home. I can't talk today. Blah! Um, so, yeah. Uh, this... This, uh, Hispanic gang, uh, they have their old folks home. They're taking care of their grandparents, other people's grandparents, and... They're just watching over them in the city, so... Rick gave them some of his guns to protect themselves, so they ca kind of came back empty-handed, but not really, because they didn't find Merle either. He, like, took a truck or something. 
I can't believe he's still alive. He like climbed down the building, cauterized the wound. Like I wouldn't have, I would have never thought of that cauterizing the wound. I thought he would have just bled out or something and passed out somewhere and gotten eaten and zombified. But no, he cauterized the wound, took the van, and it's pretty interesting to think about it. Now I'm actually curious as to when he'll show up. But um, something else I'm wondering: that family, Dwayne and his dad. Um, that we saw in episode one, the ones that found and took care of Rick. Uh, I'm kind of wondering where they are, because we haven't seen them in a good bit. I was just thinking, like, you know, if we don't see them this episode, I wonder wonder what happened to them. So, hopefully they're okay. Hopefully the dad brought it upon himself to shoot his zombified wife. I don't know what's going on with them, but hopefully we see them again soon, and, um... I wonder how we're going to recover from Amy uh, getting zombified. And also, there was this wife beater that got zombified too, I think. He got bitten in the tent. Uh, he got beaten up by Shane earlier last episode for hitting his wife. But yeah, lots lots of stuff going on. Lots too much to discuss in, su in such a short period of time. I can't wait to see where the show goes. They're probably all going to head out because that place isn't safe anymore, I, I think. Um... But, yeah, it's going to be interesting to find out what's going on with them. So, on to episode five. Episode five. Now, what was I saying? Uh, the last the last episode I was saying, man, I hope we see more of uh, Dwayne and his dad soon. And, well, why we didn't see him anymore, <laughs> Rick did bring him up. He was trying to contact them through the walkie-talkie on the hilltop. So, that was pretty cool to see. Um, but this episode had a lot in it. Uh... A big contrast from the last episode. The last episode is a, a bit slow, but this one's got a ton, and that was super exciting. So it basically starts off with the camp recovering from the attack they had the night before, uh, where they lost uh, Amy, who is Andrea's, her name is? I think I'm finally getting her name. Andrea's younger sister. And uh, they also lost the wife beater. <laughs> Good riddance. <laughs> I know that's cruel, but it's TV. These are characters. Um... Uh, but Jim also got bit, the one who had the dream and was digging the holes uh, yesterday. Uh, Jim got bit, and he was sort of losing it, going out of control. And, yeah, he was not doing well in that car ride. They were trying to go to some kind of disease center to find a cure for him. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't make it in time, and Jim just decided to, you know, step out and just die. Which is, it was sad. I like Jim. <laughs> I don't. I didn't know him too well, uh, uh, but I like him. Um, yeah, but Shane was being evil. Ooh, he was aiming at Rick, getting ready to shoot, and then the old man caught him. Oh, busted, Mister. Oh man. <laughs> oh, that's gonna come up later, probably in the finale, which is this next episode. So I'm, I'm excited to see where the finale goes. Um, wow, only six episodes. Makes me excited to see the. Seasons that are longer. Um, but yeah, um, even though Jim died, uh, they're still going to the disease center just to look for a safe place to stay. Hopefully find a cure for this horrible disease. Um, an interesting thing, the scientist that was vlogging or documenting his research on the disease, uh, he said that it had been like 60-something days since it went global. Um... So, it's kind of interesting how it got overseas. Probably by plane or something. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of curious. I wonder if they'll go more into that later. Like, maybe they'll cross the country to less infected areas. So, kind of interesting to know it went global. I figured it would have been like an America-only thing. Or maybe just even in that small town. Um, don't know why I would think that. <laughs> but yeah. So, more of Shane being evil. Jim died, um... Andrea killed Amy as she was starting to turn into a zombie after she got bit. Uh, they're going to the research center. Rick's still trying to contact uh, Dwayne and his dad. Uh, I think his name was Morgan. I'm getting names. And we still haven't seen more of um, 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 Merle yet. We still haven't seen Merle come back with his missing hand. So we've got, we still got lots of stuff. I'm wondering if it'll all come together in the uh, finale. So I'm just going to go get into that. I'm excited. Episode 6, nothing got addressed, people died, and others need to stop throwing up, because it's making me sick, blech. Like seriously, I'm terrified of that stuff more than the zombie things. We had like, three different people vomiting in like six episodes. We had Glenn in episode 2, 
uh, when they had to cover themselves up in the guts. Then we had a uh, uh, Jim last episode when he was all sick and stuff, and then we had Andrea this episode. Oh my gosh! Um, but anyways, they just spent the whole time at the research facility just chilling out, doing nothing really. They went over a diagram of how the zombie stuff works. So it was interesting to see that, and um, the scientist dude whispered something in Rick's ear. I'm sure that's going to come up in the season 2 premiere. Uh, it seemed like some kind of crazy revelation or something. Um, like he knows something that no one else does. So it's going to be interesting to find that out, but mostly it was just characters hanging out until the, in the facility until they were until the place was about to explode, then they had to escape. So nothing, they didn't really learn anything. They just kind of chilled out there until they had to go because the main scientist dude that was in there, he didn't find out anything either. He was just a sad bum and he blew up along with someone who decided to stay behind for some reason. Uh, huh. But Andrea and Dale made it out. I finally remembered the old guy's name. His name was Dale. I finally learned it. But Shane is getting Shane is getting worse. I oh my gosh, Shane. Shane, 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 Shane. I mean, the episode opens up with a flashback of him uh, helping Rick in the hospital when Rick was still in a coma, trying to protect him or something, and he thought he was dead, I don't know. Um, uh, so they, tr they tried to get us on his side for a bit there. It didn't work on me because of all the stuff earlier. And then he tried to... He was drunk and tried to do stuff with Lori. Ugh. I mean, I get it, he was drunk and wasn't aware and didn't have control of himself, and, uh, of himself, but that's still not an excuse. That's, oh man, that was uncomfy and they're still, still not talking to Rick about it. I need, I need closure more than Rick does. This is driving me nuts. Um, but yeah, it, this, the finale was a little bit of a letdown, but not really. I mean, I still enjoyed the episode as it was, as a standalone episode. But it just didn't really get much done. It was just kind of more hopelessness. Um, but yeah. Um, on to season 2 I guess.